Hey everyone, Sean here, and today in this video I wanted to sit down and talk about uh, my uh, review for the first four episodes of Bo The Boys Season 4. Just thought I'd do like a, you know, checkpoint or something like that, a little, little um, gas station stop type of thing, you know, stretch it out, you know, kind of thing, and, you know, and, and, and we can also take this time to talk it out um, regarding to The Boys as well, so... Um, this did, of course, come out with the first three episodes right off the bat, and then uh, recently came out with just the one episode for each week, of course, for the rest of it. Um, and this will be a, a episode uh, uh, season, just like all the others. And um, I do have uh, things to say about for the first four episodes, but it's kind of like collective, and it doesn't. Uh, I'm probably not gonna go with these like one by one or like that maybe i will later on but um i'm gonna just get the general thoughts out of the way for the sake of um this video so the boys of course um always always sort of like talks about this whole commentary with these superheroes um how they can you know essentially affect those around you and how they kind of like work in the world especially from a very much of a corporate uh perspective right we have vod which is like a huge aspect in this story um how these superheroes are treated they're kind of like treated like uh, like celebrities you know they appear in like these movies and the video games and of course they have these like fan meetups and stuff like that sign autographs and all that stuff but of course you get to see behind the doors and you get to see get to see all the fucked up dark shit you know that these heroes actually go through because of who they actually are and such um and of course they're, they're uh and that's the you know like the seven and all the other here superheroes under the the bot um umbrella so so to say and it always you know conveys that in a you know whether it's a dark just that dark fucked up matter with black comedy or with um, uh, just straight up gore and violence, you know. And then you have the other side, which is uh, the humans mostly. And then you have some of the soups who are willing to fight against Bot and such. The boys, right? Name of the title and everything. And um, the you know the titular group uh, is hard to, hard word to say, but yes, um, you know, mostly led by Butcher. And then, but for the season. Um, because of what he is going through and all the stuff that he did and, and, and uh, what his current circumstances are. Um, he had to take the back seat for, at least for, for a moment, with Mother's Milk taking over. He was kind of like always like the second in command type of character. And um, uh, we see him leading the team, of, uh, at least for the first uh, three uh, episodes at least. And then, you know, I guess maybe some exceptions in... Uh, uh, episode four, but I guess that's really depends on how you look at it. But I think um, you know it really goes to show that Butcher is sort of like almost like the foundation, right? He is what makes the boys the boys, right? And so you can't really you know count him out completely. He has his own ways, whether you like it or not. Um, and yeah, of course he's very unlikable to the characters, but uh, you just love to see him work, do his thing. And um, it's always a treat to watch. And uh, that is definitely no exception here uh, in season four. You just love the man, how he works. Um, now, of course, there, is, there are um, sort of like big bumps on the road, so to say, to say the least, with Butcher because of what happened in season three. And uh, basically, you know, he, he's going through his sort of last final months right because of what he did with himself which is you know pumping himself with all this uh temp v and uh, leaving him essentially dying um and you kind of get to see him coping with that uh and of course uh his continuing relationship i guess you could say with um becca and homelander's son uh, ryan right and uh, thankfully it's um you know good to watch it's very wholesome uh, i will say that off the bat for the most part and i think that is honest uh definitely the the strongest story part of the storyline um besides homelander of course <clears throat> which we will get to in a bit but um uh him and ryan 
seem to be on better terms than before, you know. But there, oh, but the, uh, of course, there is that sort of. There's something hanging over them, and of course, one of them, um, of course, is Homelander, right? He's like essentially a ticking time bomb, uh, more than ever in this season. Um, and then we'll get to the episode four of what happened with Homelander and such. But um, uh, oh yeah, and then by the uh, so by the way. Uh, I'll try not to bring up like major spoilers here. Maybe I'll do like a spoiler section uh, later on. So anyway, season four um, definitely has uh, mostly ups and uh, some downs. And I think these downs are very abrasive this time around. Um, one of them being uh, Frenchie's relationship with Colin. And uh, I guess Col or I guess yeah. The twist, or whatever, quote unquote, is that um, Frenchie actually uh, has some some sort of connection with uh, Colin in a way, uh, indirectly, or or whatever. And um, Frenchie was a hitman at some point for uh, a Russian mafia, I believe, and we got got to see that last time with this with the uh, the Russian chick who is the leader, and she essentially. Had Frenchie on a leash, at least at some point, for a very long time. And uh, he tends to, or Frenchie tends to fall into the cycle because of his problems with his father. Which, you know, that has been a, a reoccurring thing with uh, at least a number of characters, right? People with daddy issues and stuff, especially with Homelander. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so Frenchie has to have like this thing where he just attend, just tends to follow and do orders and such so that uh, I guess in a way he feels appreciated or he feels like he has some sort of purpose um, because I guess he was a disappointment to his dad maybe perhaps I, I forget when, when it comes to Frenchie Homelander yes very much so but um, Frenchie yeah uh, I think I'm assuming anyway he's doing that he does that because of that that sort of that void in his heart or in his life anyway so that so anyway he had a hit to do, and that hit happened to be um, Colin's parents, at least with the mom anyway. I think I forget who who was the judge, but that those judge the one one of the judges whatever one of those parents was a threat of sorts to that that Russian mafia or whatever. So that's why that or, that hit was ordered, and uh, Frenchie did it. He murdered them along with uh, I believe Colin's sister, and. Colin was the survive, sole survivor because he was hiding in the bed and such. He was hiding. And then um, uh, he always, of course, wondered. He never knew who, who murdered them. He just kind of saw it happen because he was hiding somewhere. And so, um, so that, that was revealed right away. So, you know, that, that, that was kind of like not a spoiler. Really. It's just a matter of like him knowing, um, you know, Frenchie doing it and such. That's the... The, the twist, quote unquote. It was already laid out, like, first off, so it's not really a spoiler, it's like kind of minor spoilers, but yeah, that's kind of like the premise, right? That's why, no, it this supposed relationship is, or supposedly is interesting because this relationship has that going, right? So, honestly, that part of the story, I don't think has really to do much with Frenchie, other than just his character, I guess you could say, but. Um, I'm more for uh, what's going on with Frenchie and Kimiko. And I thought, honestly, I thought Kimiko and Frenchie had something going. But all of a sudden, it's just like, not happening. Right? It's literally not happening. You know? Kimiko had said it herself just suddenly. It's not happening. You know? When they were, like, becoming more and more intimate with each other. And, of course, with the very first time when Frenchie was... You know, um, wanting to rescue Kimiko from her sort of imprisonment and stuff like that. Her her time in season one wasn't right, and um, uh, you know, of course. So so with that, like, right, all that setup, right, all that build up, all all of the the the, the snowballing, right, just came to a to, to a halt with this season, with a story, right. You know, Frenchie was always. Uh, bisexual, you know, uh, there, there was some sort of surprise, like, hey, why, why is he going out with this dude or whatever? You know, Frenchie was actually always 
uh, bisexual. I think they hint, uh, openly hinted that in uh, season one or something, right? So I definitely remember because there was a flashback and um, uh, Frenchie backed out at one of the missions during uh, the heyday of the boys, you know, to so that he can rescue his um, his boyfriend at the time. But, you know, he, he that boyfriend died of an overdose, right? That was obviously the, that a sign that he is bisexual. <clears throat> and then, you know, he's had that, like, weird, like, on and off relationship with uh, this one, that one chick. I forget her name or whatever. But, um, uh, but she was there, you know, during the time of that boyfriend's death or whatever. So they were kind of, like, in that circle, you know. Um... Seemed like a more like a friend, a friend with benefits sort of thing than an actual girlfriend. But whatever, I, I maybe I'm reading that wrong. But anyways, back to here with Frenchie. So I, I feel like I don't know. Other than the whole like, yeah, you know, he, you know, uh, he, he killed these, he killed these parents, and um, you know what I mean, like uh, Colin being the sole survivor and then, oh he's happy to go in happens to go out with him and i don't know it's just it was set up weird i don't really i didn't I, I don't really vibe with it and um i guess sure like at the end of the day it'll it'll show what where friend she is but like it was such a whole um sudden stop with what's going on with kimiko and frenchie it's like okay i don't get it you know they didn't really, uh, like, set that up all that well, you know, from season three, you know, like, we, we didn't get to get to actually see, you know, that, that hit, and then, you know what I mean, like, it's, it was definitely, it's, de it's just definitely abrupt, you know, I felt, but, um, uh, if you notice, right, in the, in the season, there are a lot of side stories going on, right? We got Huey and uh, his parents going on, especially with his dad, what he is going through. Um, and then um, MM kind of, right? Trying to, you know, um, kind of maintain his relationship with, um, uh, I guess, ex-wife or whatever, and uh, his daughter. And then there's stuff going on with Todd. You know the the current boyfriend or whatever, or they're separated. I don't know. Uh, I I don't know if he's like an official ex or whatever. But anyway, I think I think I think he I think he they they are broken up. But uh, what do you call it? the daughter still likes Todd. So you know, Mother Milk uh, was asked to follow him and such. But that'll lead to something. But anyway. Um, and then when it comes to Starlight, of course, Starlight has her thing with um, the Starlighters against the te uh, Team Homeland or Homelander, uh, Homelander or um, I don't know if they're called the Homelanders or anything, but yeah, you know, the Starlighters versus the Homelanders, you know, that whole spiel. And um, uh, Kimiko and her sort of what she's going through as well, you know. There's a so the, yeah. There's a lot of stories going on there already, and then you have the other side, right, with the seven. You know, you got stuff with um, the deep. You got stuff with A Train. You have um, what's whatever's going on with Black Noir, right? Because you see him in the trailer, even though he died in season three or whatever died, but um, and then of course uh, the new characters that came that are coming in or came that came in already for season for the new spots of the seven, right? You have uh, Sister, Sister Sage and you have Firecracker, you know? And, uh, of course, uh, first, uh, most importantly, of course, Homelander, of course. That, that, that's, that's, like, um, one of the main attractions, right? And then you have, of course, Butcher, Ryan, and all that stuff. And even um, Ashley, I think her name is, right? The annoying CEO bitch um, has her thing going on too, you know? So, there's a lot going on, and I feel like this is the 
um, season to like knock out all these side stories, right? Get them out of the way, and then you can have season five, which is supposedly, I guess, the final season, to just go full full course, um, no stops or anything like that on the main story, you know, whatever that is. And so, um, yeah. And then you even have some unanswered questions with what happened to Soldier Boy, of course. But that has yet to be said. So I'm not going to say that too much. Um, so I, I, I think overall, though, the, the weakest side story, though, um, is um, Frenchie. And I can kind of understand if this, feel, if this does kind of feel like a little jumpy because of how many side stories we're dealing with here but if you uh can get past that it's just the boys right you know the deep is just funny as ever there's atrian of course going through his stuff and um butcher being butcher in, in, in a lot of moments but yes he he is getting roughed up by the uh his condition you know but there's still like the moments you like you know tend to see in the boys with the violence, the sort of the black comedy around it. And then, you know, um, even like, of course, the introductory episode for Firecracker. Um, hit her like right hand man or whatever, like the, um, the guy who can like split and multiply. Definitely had that moment, you know, pretty, pretty nasty. <laughs> And, um, you know, even got a pink eye out of it. Or pink eyes, rather. <laughs> Pretty nasty. Um, yeah, it's just as gory as ever. Especially by the t by, by uh, episode 4. Um, that gets really, really fucked up. Um, uh, and it's, I would say it's probably the best ones thus far. A more, uh, depending on who you are. Um, and how you look at it, right? Because of just the gore and such, you know, it's it, it does make that into an art at this point. Um, really drives the story and like the characters, or especially Homelander, um, of who they are with the violence. And let me see. Um, I would say probably the weakest episode is episode three because I think it, that's the one that ta really tackles Frenchie and stuff like that with his side story. Again, I I, I don't think it was like necessary to um, explore this side of Frenchie because we want to see Frenchie and Kimiko, you know. But what's what the the Colin situation? You know what I mean? Like what what's that really going to contribute to, right? Maybe there's something set up for season five, perhaps, or maybe maybe, um, maybe uh, later on or something, you know. But early, but first impressions with this, I guess you could call it for uh, Frenchie's side story. Um, if there is no re resolution or solu uh, resolution or revelation out of this side, um, I definitely feel like this is the weakest part of um, the boys season four. You know, but it's not to say that it really takes it away. It's still the boys. It's still very enjoyable, um, especially with again the violence, the gore, and of course the common social commentary. It still makes fun of um, conservatives and even liberals and just politicians in general. The whole idea of having these superheroes being celebrities and stuff like that, and just like the demographics, right? Um, which is really funny because some people are now getting that figured out it's like uh like it, now they realize they're they're the ones who who are being made fun of along with a, number, a lot of other demographics right and they just don't they just don't, suddenly don't like the show because they take it so personally which is like some of the funniest things i find um outside of the boys you know they now just starting to realize their group or demographic is being teased is being made fun of you know they're you know, um, you have like the conspirators, right? You have the homelanders, you have the starlighters, you know, um, 
it, it's just it's 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 uh, it's satire. It definitely is satire, right? Um, you you got like the Tucker Tucker Carlson stuff, right? Um, being made into this uh, character, I forget his name. Um, and you know he he has even his little his own little story going on, right? Is let's not forget Newman, right? That's uh, another story to try to digest as well. You know, with what's going on with her, her daughter, you know, um, and what she did to her daughter. You know, now it's like you see it. You know, it's, and it's definitely fucked up. You know, um, so yeah, the the veracity, the the uncomfortableness does come in, right? Especially in the latest episode. It will make you uncomfortable because of how and what Homelander does to certain people because um, he was tr he was being experimented on. He's, you know, he's, a, he's like the first soup or not the first soup, but he's like the best soup, right? Of the batch. And they were experimenting on, experimenting on him. He had no parental love. He had no proper parents, no father figure, no nothing. Hence the whole daddy issues um, part of Homelander, and very fucked up at that. A very very, um, you know, fucked up victim of daddy issues, and you know, no no such um, parenting and stuff like that. He just never had any love, right? Mommy issues, of course, even. That's why he had his relationship with, uh, I think her name was Grace, right? And his all, whole obsession with milk, you know? Especially breast milk. <laughs> um, it, you know, that's why it gets kind of memed on. It's such a memorable thing, you know? And uh, season four does have uh, memorable moments. You know, th these, th these memes that get produced out of these out of each season definitely you know the meme machine is still chugging along very well and um, the boys is doing what they're doing right which is to just create shock factor but it actually contributes to the story I think their writing is still uh, nearly top-notch um, I would say though probably these three episodes right that it, it probably probably it probably is the quote unquote weakest premiere of all these seasons but it is not to say that the, the, this three episode premiere this time around is, isn't bad at all it's just like if you compare all, all the other uh, the boys season premieres probably this one right being the weakest quote unquote was still very much enjoyable like I said so the visceral the shock factor the, the impact is all there. The writing is so good. You, it, Homelander is still very much enjoyable, especially when he's um, trying to be a father to uh, his biological son Ryan, right? But you, you just know if you if you watch the show, you just know that he is not going to be a good father, and you're just there to see it. It's like a very bad car accident, and you just cannot help yourselves to stare at it. You know, check it out. You know, see what happens, right? And um, it, that's kind of the nature of this season to a strong degree. Because, yeah, that, that is a huge part of the story, which is what Ryan's going through, what Homelander's going through, what they're going through together. And, of course, with Butcher and all that, and, and the rest of the boys, everyone else around them, too. You know? I mean, yeah. Like so, with that, there are plenty, plenty of memorable moments, especially when Homelander is exercising, is exercising his power, right, in the building, you know, of Vaughn, because he's like essentially the the CEO or whatever, or COO, whatever, the top guy, and um, you know, he 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 at one point says like he's surrounded by idiots, people who just don't. Um, argue with him because of course people are scared which gets called out by somebody in episode 4 but um, so that's why hence why Sister Sage comes in 
Which, by the way, I do I do like Sister Sage. I think she's a great addition to the cast. Um, I don't think she's annoying by any means. Her powers are interesting, right? Of how they go about it. With um, her brain power. All the, the soup powers in her head. And how, or what kind of, like, weaknesses she has. Which is also interesting. And so, and, and, and how she deal was, deals with that is also pretty uh, intriguing as well. Firecracker is kind of like a throwaway. Um, other than the whole, like, you know, b- being a, a conspiracy co- podcaster and, like, likes to um, essentially go around spreading rumors and such. She essentially is the drama starter, right? Like you see on, on, on YouTube and such like that. Who likes to start drama, baiting drama, you know, that typical drama queen, right? Like, kind of thing. Except on a YouTube scale. Um, I feel like that's more of what defines her than her actual powers, even though she is called Firecracker, you know? Um, that whole spiel is what makes Firecracker, right? You know, I, I like the line with, um, Sister, Sister Sage, you know, Firecracker um, is there to not silence the Starlers, is to make them, but to make them louder, right? To get them more riled up, to get them more angry, so that they can sort of make their own mistakes, hang themselves, right? Kind of thing. And that's what um, she is solely there for. And even Homelander is like, why? Why is she here? Why? Why'd you pick um, Fire, Firecracker? And Sister Sage Pam picked her for that sole purpose is to make Starlight and the others, you know, the Starlighters, look bad. Because, um, obviously, uh, there's a lot of moral support from Starlight's, um, you know, Starlighters group and such. But was the episode, uh, episode four, um, things have changed, let's just say. And man, you know, I, I definitely want to get to the moments, but that, of course, spoils things. So I'm going to um, pretty much stop it here, but the, all the stuff is there. All what you see or what you hope to see from the boys is definitely still in season four. There are some abrasive uh, things, kind of like with uh, with Frenchie's relationship stuff. Um, I would say still that is the weakest part of... Um, of the boys and you could kind of have mixed uh, one will have probably have mixed feelings with like Huey and stuff such maybe mother's milk a, l- a little bit but the rest of everything is always a spectacle the violence is there episode episode four is like unhinged you know uh, that's another word to describe it you know season four Especially by episode four, is very much unhinged as ever, you know. So with that, I think with episode four into factor as well, I'm gonna give these four first four episodes, you know, this first half, if uh, eight out of ten, very solid. Just have a f- very few things, you know, um, but once you get over them, the rest of it is very good. I say I very much enjoy it. Enjoy it, um, and I and I've been very much looking forward to each week for season four. You know, once season four was premiered, I sat down, watched all uh, three episodes right away. You know, um, and I liked what I've seen. So thank you very much. And uh, this has been my non-spoiler portion. So now we're going to spoiler portions. So uh, for those who want to uh, step off, thank you very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. But for those who want to stick around for the spoilers, thank you very much. And hope to see you in the spoiler section of things. Okay, so season four. Oh man, there, there is definitely uh, stuff to unfold. But um, man, the one of the one of the most memorable moments was with um, the meet, the first meeting, I think. With Homelander and the rest of the seven. And Homelander essentially uh, asks uh, the Deep to give A-Train 
a blowjob to blow him. And um, at first, of course, they were like, what? You know? And then Homelander just like, do it, you know? In that Homelander fashion. And the Deep is just like, you know, eh, you know, sexuality is just the spectrum, right? <laughs> you know? And then he was about to do it. And then even Ash was just like getting into it, like, oh, you know? Like, you could call it, some say kind of, uh, actually kind of a tumor or whatever for that, for uh, boys love or BL or whatever you call it. Uh, it's very, very funny. But, um, and honestly, I thought, I thought it was going to happen. I actually thought it was going to happen, but Homelander's like, nope, that goes to show you guys are just a bunch of yes men because you got, you guys are all cowards or you're, you're just all idiots, right? And he has to carry the company. So, that is why he wanted to go and uh, find um, Sister Sage because she's like you know very smart, and uh, have all the superheroes that were or soups to fill in the missing gaps for the seven. Um, he wanted to seek out S Sister Sage, and Sister Sage, after that talk, right, you know she got picked, and she accepted. After um, Homelander was like, you know, uh, you can sit here all you want and, uh, you know, wallow, uh, you know, waste your time, you know, just being by yourself, eating Taco Bell or whatever, or you can actually like practice your theories, right? Do your thing with us as the seven, right? As part of the seven. And uh, of course, she didn't want like spotlight, but, you know, being part of the seven, you're going to have to have some sort of spotlight. You know, but she accepted because she actually wants to practice those theories that she always had, right? Being so smart and everything. So, um, Homelander may not be as smart, but he is pretty wise, and he knows how he knows how to uh, talk some people down or convince people, right? So, uh, despite yeah, not having to grow up with parents and such. You know, he kind of learned on his own so in, in, in that regard. But, yeah. Um, and, of course, Sister Sage handpicks a firecracker. One of the last stuff. Yeah, not before is having to see the uh, the train, right? The human centipede. And, uh, woo! Um, wow. <laughs> it's kind of like, the, the, you know, of course. I think season three, yeah. Season three had uh, what? You, what was it called? Um, it was that big, big, big party with the soups, and they all have a big orgy or whatever. Um, I forget what it was called. Oh man, it's like slip. It's like right on the tip of my tongue. But um, anyway, there was that moment in season three. You already have that kind of moment, uh, sort of, in this one with um, Firecracker's assistant or whatever. I forget his name. But yeah, uh, he's kind of like double, I think, from uh, My Hero Academia, of how he can like divide himself and the whole thing with Prime. Uh, but yeah, in this one though, if you kill Prime, they all die, right? Whereas um, I think with other clones, they can live on. You know, same with Duplicate, right? She has died like plenty of times, and all those other ones, of course, died plenty of times. But um, of course. The original one, blah, 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 is out there somewhere, blah, 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 whatever, you know? Um, anyway, um, after that, though, yes, with Sister, Sister Sage on the team, she came up with the idea of how to bring down Starlighters in a way, and um, essentially, they went to some of the Homelanders, Landers, including Todd, right, who was, I guess, an ex-boyfriend at this point. At least he's sort of separated um, with M.M.'s uh, ex-wife. But still has some sort of, like, connection with um, his daughter because uh, she is quite fond of him, right? You know, they, they, they have fun together and such um, whenever uh, M.M. is not there. And he was sacrificed as a martyr of sorts for Homelander, right? The Homelander. And I love that moment because, like, you know, yeah, they get their heads bashed in with the bat. 
And then um, A Train though, he just stopped um, Todd because Todd wanted to run out. He wanted to escape, but he couldn't. And um, of course, you know, he was kind of like the most hesitant of the bunch, right? Because uh, uh, was it Black Noir, The Deep, were bashing other people's heads in. And after Todd was stopped, A Train hesitated, of course, and then uh, uh, Black Noir then goes for the kill. He he is the one to kill um, Todd. And Todd, um, you know, is now gone. Homeland or uh, MM had to break that news eventually, but um, yeah, he became the martyr so that um, uh, with their bodies, right? A Train was forced. And instructed by Sister Sage to lay out those bodies somewhere during the riot because um, Sister Sage infiltrated. She threw like a drink at one of the bomb, calling them fascists, and then that ignited the fight. And in the middle of the fight, of course, A Train planted the bodies and uh, essentially, you know, points and that points and accuses uh, star the Starlighters as murderers, right? Having these three homelanders dead or whatever but of course that's all part of the plan right it's all it's a, it's a ruse right oh, uh, elaborated by the seven but of course with a train yeah he's still associated with um the the the, the murder right so you know he you know and uh, uh he even has a moment a scene somewhere where he was talking to his nephews I think about his stories but then his brother who who's now in the wheelchair because of uh um I forget his name it was like uh like something hawk or whatever um uh fucked them up and his brother came in all bitter and you know whatever right understandably so and told him that all his stories were lies because they're all stories fabricated from like the movies or whatever or they like to play up his stories for those movies and instead like it was someone else that did it and Adrian was uh, mostly if not never ever a hero um, he's kind of just there to do the biddings of the other seven if not Homelander and uh, you know just show off in the, under the bot name and yeah so he's kind of like a a celebrity if you will or um uh a figure piece right for for Vought to help make them money and such and get their eyes get people's eyes on Vought too as well as a, himself and whatever the the whole soup stuff so yeah um he was never really a hero, right? Even though he's like painted to be one by Vought and all that stuff. It's just bullshit. So Adrian has been like looking at himself, reflecting, and trying to have some sort of chance to redeem himself somehow. And uh, somewhere, um, he was able to provide some footage to Starlight as to what happened. You know? Um, with uh, the incident but of course S sister sage being smart and all she was able to uh, find that right but she wasn't able to find who did it so that's why she wanted to um investigate all the members of the the crime division uh kicking kicking out uh the deep uh, out of that division in the process so he's no longer the, the director of the, the crime division and so <laughs> and that was a funny moment of himself um and uh they wanted to in interrogate all the people including that one character i forget her name was it was like a nita or something like that uh she was like eating a bar or something like that at one point helping out the original black noir at one point but unfortunately as soon as uh, she was trying to give her answer or whatever um or she had an answer or she already said her answer but like she would she could she could have had like other useful information homelander blasted her brains out with his laser eyes kills her and she's she's off 
right so that's very unfortunate that it happened you know um so yeah uh, another sort of unhinged moment it's like oh my god what the fuck <laughs> yeah um but let's talk about the d for a moment right he still has his, has the thing going on with the octopus or one of the octopuses i don't know um i don't know if that's like the octopus from like season three or whatever but yeah um he can communicate with those fish or aquatic life so he can hear her voice um but more and more as time goes on he becomes hesitant he doesn't he doesn't want to like you know uh risk his himself because he was already like warned once not to do that you know especially with that scene where homelander forces him to eat one of uh like a, it was like a squid or an octopus i forget uh i think it was an octopus he had to eat it raw right alive and everything so um <laughs> yeah and then um in that process though ashley is no longer a, a, a official ceo she is like kind of like a kagamusha or a puppet figure of sorts of a ceo so in the public eyes she is a ceo still but for realsies um sister sage is acting ceo and Ashley is kind of just there as a figurehead, essentially. A shadow puppet, if you will. And, um, let me see. So, yeah, so so Ashley has her, now, now she has, like, um, her own little uh, conflict, self-conflict, you know, and she's trying to quit, but she can't because she's scared. Um, she gets pulled, continues to get pulled in with these things and it's um it makes things difficult for her right she even says like oh yeah disney's been trying to hire me for a long time so i'm gonna do it you know but she doesn't because again she kind of like is scared and all that stuff though in episode four i believe she left some sort of floater i think right in uh homelander's uh, apartment so um yeah so that all happened. And I love the scene with um, Sister Sage telling Deep to be like, dude, you're a soup. Act like it. You know, you let a, a fucking um, Ashley talk to you like that? Like, why? She's just human. You're a soup. You can literally kill, like, kill the shit out of her. And um, the Deep just goes. He, go, he He's like, if you ever talk to me like if you ever talk to me again i'm a you know I'm, I'm gonna kill you right like like whatever he you know however he wants i'm gonna fucking kill you and then she, like ashley's just like oh shit like what the fuck like damn I'm like well where did that come from you know you know and, and all of a sudden you know <sighs> which i thought was just like kind of funny oh and i forgot to talk about um with this black noir so obviously uh, this black noir seemingly is just an actor he's not even like an official soup maybe maybe he is a soup i don't know it's still up in the air but i love the scene with black noir after the the, the martyr scene right uh he's like okay guys whoa that was that was <laughs> so fucked up <laughs> And then he's like asking all these questions, like, "All right, who am I really? Like, you know, why am I just not being told anything? You know, um, I feel like I'm on this island. Like, no one's telling me anything. What are my motivations? Who am I? You know, like, what 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 is Black Noir, right? And um, Homelander and even Adrian, of course, they're like, "Yeah, just be quiet, be quiet. You know, don't talk. That's what uh, Noir did. He was just like silent." You know, that's just how he was. And so, yeah, like, uh, I thought it was strange to see Black Noir again. But, like, yeah, it's just an actor. Because, obviously, if Black Noir is gone, that's that definitely raises questions, right? Because he's, like, um, very much iconic, very strong. So, for him to be gone, it's like, hmm, I'll raise some questions. So, anyway, um... 
black, uh, so yeah, that that black noir. We'll see if um, what his actual role would be like. And do he, does he have like any super abilities at all? You know, I mean, he can bash someone's brains in with a bat, but you know, that could be done, I guess, by humans, right? So. And, and and also he is not galactic, so yeah, he just like randomly falls asleep and such, <laughs> which is funny. Uh, yeah, and then you know, um, there was that incident with Brian, right? They were trying to like film like a bank robbery thing to help promote Ryan as a new member of the Seven or whatever, <laughs> and just uh, and you know, because Homelander is essentially grooming him to be his successor, right? Um, Ryan tried to just uh, kind of get to learn his powers, but Homelander's just like, "Do it," you know. And then um, Ryan goes ahead, goes ahead and does it. You know. Meanwhile, Homelander's still like so insecure, and he wants to hog the spotlight. He wants to like be there while doing so. And Ryan actually accidentally kills the stuntman, and um, and they had they had to like change it to something else. I love the little girl. She's like, you saved me? <laughs> I love that. I love that little bit. It's so funny. You know, in this dark moment, right? You know, but it was really funny nonetheless. Um, well, well, uh, any other, any other stuff? Um, so, yes. Um, I mean, that's, that's essentially it. For all the major stuff, anyway, within the first three episodes, but I, I wanted to get to episode four, I guess. I, I just want to get there now. And if I'm missing anything, I'll probably bring it up in the other half. But anyway, um, episode four. Holy shit, that was actually uncomfortable for me to watch. I guess in a good way, it really sets the mood, right? Um, Homelander, um, was told by his other side of himself, like his consciousness, to let go of his humanity. But in order for him, for him to do that, he has to go back to his um, sort of his home grounds, which is like that lab. So he goes down to the lab and brings a ice cream cake to kind of like throw off people, right? Try to appear as friendly, but pe the people know already, like what what he's going to do to them. They kind of knew. In a way, and um, they're kind of just like all like this while they're eating their ice cream cake, their piece, <laughs> you know, like fake laugh, fake laughter along the way, and then like it, it, and seemingly one by one, he was killing off all the members that or the, all all the members of that scientist group that at least he remembers anyway, especially with um. That one guy, he was like, you know, shooting uh, the waste waste basket shots or whatever. Because um, you know, Homelander remembers apparently that he was in the uh, the oven room to test test the durability of his skin and burning temperatures. Um, which yeah, he in can endure, but he can feel it still. And uh, he even says like, you know, you made a shot, a good shot. And you did a fist bump, or pump, and uh, he he went ahead and raised the temperature to see, right, if he can endure all that, you know, and uh, and and he essentially throws that guy into the into that very room and burns him alive, you know, and you get to see it all happen essentially, and then see the reaction of from his other fellow scientists, shocked obviously. You know, and then the next one was like really fucked up. This is this is some like power harassment stuff. You know, like man, this is this is Homelander right unhinged, and um, Homelander right. He was always alone. He was a growing boy, so he did what other growing boys do, which is to you know like take care of their business, right? You know to let it out you know and then um one time 
uh, that leading scientist, I forgot his name, walked in on him, saw his private parts, and he laughs, and then uh, um, nickname, nicknamed him Squirt. Because I guess maybe how small he is down there, or like, I don't know, the nature of it. Maybe, maybe he did finish, but, um, you know, or he saw him as he finished. I don't know. Maybe that's why he called him that. But either way, he called him Squirt. And so, Homelander wanted to give him that taste of the medicine and made him pull his pants down and tried to rub one out. Um, but unfortunately, he couldn't finish. But but to the as for the amusement of Homelander, laughs at him, and then next thing you know, lasers his crotch off. Um, and he's like, "Oh, look at you squirt now!" You know, <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, man!" That was just like, "Oh, man!" But you almost kind of want to cheer for him because of how sinister he is, right? You know, right now. Like, he is owning the sinisterness, right? And then, um, uh, the actual, like, the director, right? Um, finally comes in after he asked earlier for her presence. The director comes in, tells him to stop, let's talk it out. And he was like, you know, I'd rather talk in that room, right? You know, the room where he was alone and all that stuff. And then, um, they were talking. And then, like, the, um, next thing, right? They were, obviously, they were talking, going through the dialogue, right? Um, you know, and she tells him, right? Like, they, they just never spoke up for you because they're scared, you know? And then, you know, uh, she even describes like how he was birthed, you know, lasering out his his own mother, I think, and everything. So of course they're scared, but still, you know, the fact that they never tried to, you know, I guess it's understandable, right? They never tried to, to say that hey, this is going too far. Let's stop, right? No one ever. Um, thought about it, you know, or tried to. Now, at least for like those people who died, right? They were probably fucked up. They they probably deserved to die in his eyes, anyway, at least. But eventually, um, I think this was right at the end, if not close to the end. Homelander is just covered in blood, walks out that smile. Um, and let and leaves essentially the director for uh, for dead, left for dead, right? Because he welded the door shut, and now she's left with all the bodies, like the, the, the these fucked up bodies, thanks to Homelander, of those rest of the, of the rest of the scientists, just they were they were like ground meat essentially. In that room, and of course, the director is the only one left alive, and has to see that for the rest of her days, un un uh, you know, unless someone somehow fr frees her, but she still has to sit through and watch all this. She stares at it, right? Fucking fuck up, fucked up stuff. Um. Meanwhile, right, somewhere in episode four, um. We get to see um, Sister Sage and how she has to deal with her powers, right? Her brain, great, all that, all that stuff, but it grows and it constantly grows, which is a weakness because, you know, um, normal humans have their brains stop growing at a certain age. But for, 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 for Sage, that's not the case. It's, it keeps growing. So what she does to deal with it is that she has to constantly give herself a frontal lobotomy, which is to essentially spike, put a spike in her head to um, help sh keep the brain maintain its size, right? And I don't know if she has to do that every night, but it looks like she does. 
and, and when she does give herself a lobotomy, she kind of becomes a little different. And when she does, she she kind of has the hots for um for the deep. They have like these, the common interests of like these like junk food or whatever. So that's how they connect, and they were just um they 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 go at it. They go to town right with each other. So um that's what's going on with those two. You know. Uh, anything else? Uh, oh yeah, so Firecracker and Starlight, right? Firecracker just opens the 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 grenade, right? On uh, not not a not a little grenade, but of private information, right? On Starlight, and uh, reveals to the world that Starlight had an abortion. And yes, you know Huey and. Starlight were going to have a baby, but they weren't ready, so she went and made the choice of having an abortion. So, um, that was supposed to be private, but uh, Firecracker made that public now. And she's supposed to be this, like, Christian girl, whatever, but it completely destroys that in the eyes of these people. You know? And now she's going to be called, or would be referred as a baby killer, I guess. You know? And um, upon other things, so she couldn't take it anymore. Goes on, go, uh, goes onto that stage while the cameras were rolling, and beats the living head, hell out of her. Doesn't kill her, unfortunately. MM starts uh, uh, goes there to stop her, and uh, yeah. So, and then meanwhile, Butcher. Had his com- com- uh, confrontation with uh, the guy who stretches. You know, he's also like the Christian guy or whatever. Even though he's gay. <laughs> um, he tried to stop him, uh, stop Butcher from doing his thing. Because uh, Butcher was playing, or they are trying to sabotage Firecracker. But Firecracker kind of like tried to go with it. And made it her own thing. She owned up to it. And I even like uplifted herself by being like, Oh, I, I was saved by God. Blah blah blah, you know. And you know. Oh, I I, I, I um re salvation or whatever, blah blah blah. I, I saw I was touched by whatever, you know, and I saw the wrongs of my ways, blah blah blah. You know, that that that, that type of stuff, you know. And was able to sort of deflect that, right? Um, and then, uh, yeah. So after Starlight beating the shit out of her, she essentially not only like destroyed her own image, but she tr- destroyed the trust of the president or whatever, because uh, he was associated with her. And uh, they were going to pass some sort of bill, but because of Starlight's actions, they had to cut it, right? They had to cut their ties with each other. That was it. And um, meanwhile, Butcher uh, and Frenchie had their encounter with the stretchy dude. And then Butcher looked like was about to get his ass beat, but something happened, and the stretchy guy like got shredded by seemingly uh butcher like we don't know what happened but you know maybe he appears to have not have been dying but you know or maybe he is dying but maybe he's starting to mutate but die at the same time i don't know maybe he's dying but also mutating and now he looks like he's mutating to be a soup and that's where it kind of like stops right there and then before that, right, meanwhile, Huey is dealing with his dad, right, and his mom. Um, he was like, his dad was essentially dying. He, he, he was going to have, uh, he was being, he was going to be put to sleep. But as Huey was, uh, and so Huey wanted A-Train to get the Compound V 
and then you know uh, in exchange that you know he and a Trimble can essentially bury the axe or hatchet about you know with Huey's girlfriend in the past how a train just demolished her um, and he will forgive him for that if he brings him to compound B compound V was going to be used to help revive his dad essentially but at last minute because of butcher what he told him you know with his uh, condition he tried to do it but um, it didn't help because I guess because uh, apparently it doesn't save people from dying. But we don't know, right? Because it actually maybe have, it may have actually worked. And then you know we have Huey's dad. He's you know um, he was about to be laid to rest, I guess. But or um, before that. Huey had the com compound in hand. He was going to do it, but then he, he just backs off last minute because of what to uh, Butcher told him. So he's going to just accept it, have his dad die. But out of nowhere, you see Compound V and his IB2 going into him. And, and he, Huey's dad just like wakes the fuck up. And that's I think that's where it ends. Fucking fucking mental man. Oh my oh my god, I gotta see what's next. So that's essentially where it ends ends, I think, from my memory. But man, that was just like wow. After all that, right? Um A Train. He did all that for Huey not to do it. You know? And um, you know, maybe 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 now he starts to see himself as a hero, maybe. I don't know. But, and then Huey was like, yeah, uh, I'm, I can't do it, you know. It just only will make him suffer more, seemingly. But, it appears that his mom pulled the trigger. What was the one who pulled the trigger on the compound V? She ha somehow got her hands on it. I don't know. Uh, probably because, yeah, uh, I just remember. She works for Vought, technically, as like a, uh, what do you call those, like those... Salesman or whatever, right? That, 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 like, uh, you know, you, you get like a bunch of these items. You have to sell them, right? Door to door, a door, a door to door salesman, I guess. Yeah, uh, with essential oils. So because she's affiliated with Vod, maybe she got her hands on it, right? Somehow. And uh, yeah, his his dad, Huey's dad, is gonna be a, a soup. Maybe we'll see. Maybe he'll he'll be the true Huey because um uh because what was it uh, I forget his name I forget the dad's name but he's supposed to be the original Huey but they made the son be like one of the main characters instead for this the boys because the boys in the comics it's the dad I think I forget that is the main character that's that is Huey you know it's it's very it's it's kind of weird but anyway maybe he you know maybe he's now gonna become that original Huey kind of based off of that I don't know but I gotta see him man it's I gotta wait that for that week man oh so that is it mainly other than like the Frenchie stuff yes um Colin finds out because Frenchie just couldn't take it anymore. He opens his ankle. Shows him the scars that Colin remembers. Because he was hiding the bed. Saw the burn scars or whatever. The bullet holes or whatever you want to call them. He saw the ankles. He got mad. Beast the shit out of him. And, and he's like. If you go near me again. I will kill you. So. He knows now. On top of um, Kimiko dealing with the shining light or whatever stuff. Uh, I forget the, what the deal is with that girl. That's another side story too. I forget the deal with that girl from The Shining Light was. Um, I think. Okay, no, no, no. I, I, I know what happened. So because Kimiko and her brother, um, who was in season one, 
or season two, um, were part of the start shining light. They were has they had some sort of like, um, I don't know, fight to the death or some shit. And uh, Kimiko like beat it. Uh, she defeated uh, the the girl so bad or something. She just hated her. I I forget. I forget. But eh, it's another another whatever story. It's, I don't know. I don't care about that too much. But we'll see. But on that, yeah, you know, um, you got Butcher going on. Of course, Ryan. You got Homelander stuff. Has Homelander become not human anymore, right? Like, has he let go of his humanity? Who knows? Um, is Butcher, like, not dying anymore? Because he took the actual Compound V? Who knows? Who knows? Is Compound V that powerful? Who the hell knows? We still got four more episodes. So we got more time to find out. So yeah. Very, some 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 heavy shit, man. Some heavy, heavy stuff. So thank you very much. That's all the spoiler talk I wanted to get out of the way. The boys is still the boys. Very enjoyable. I love it. Especially during the whole like uh superhero fatigue phase thing. Man oh man. Am I enjoying it? So, oh yeah, meanwhile, I forgot to talk about Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I think he's cool. <laughs> um, not much about him, but he's cool, you know. Oh yeah, and then Butcher wanted uh, to take Ryan back, but he decided to not do it because, you know, he, he would have to put him to sleep with the powder stuff. Um, you know, he, he put in the cookies, but he threw them away because he's like, yeah, fuck it. I don't want to do that to Ryan. You know? Not while he's, like, rebuilding his relationship with him. Uh, of course, with the CIA, they want Brian to be taken in, to be trained, and uh, to fight against Homelander and other soups, possibly. But, yeah. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. It really helps out, and I do appreciate it. And, um, yeah, there's a lot to talk about, man. It, it, it's that, that awesome. So, again, thank you very much. I can, uh, I'll do another review, um, for the boys, uh, after maybe, uh, maybe every two episodes. Unless that episode is, like, really, really something. Then I'll probably make a review just for that. But, for sure, when the season is over... I'll come back here and do that video. So with that, until then, thank you very much. And hope to see you all in the next one. Sean out.